Americans living through the worst economic recovery since 1949. Yet Hillary Clinton and President Obama continue to paint a rosy picture of the economy. Donald Trump slamming both of them for living in another world, but Hillary Clinton accusing Trump of using fear to turn voters against her. Too many Americans feel, Chris, like they've been left out and left behind by our economy, by our government. I understand that frustration and, and frankly, even that fear. I think the kind of inflammatory answers that Trump has provided, blame somebody, blame immigrants, uh, blame Muslims, blame women, blame somebody, uh, is um, attractive. To former Governor Tim Pawlenty, uh, uh, Governor, this is a central issue here. Uh, you know, on one hand, obviously, Hillary Clinton walking this very tight rope, if you will, saying the economy is, is great, but it could be better. Well, I think you can set aside rhetoric and just look at the numbers, Charles. As you well know, you've got a GDP uh, rate of growth that's between 1 and 2 percent, which is anemic. You have a workforce participation rate that is, you know, regressed to the point where that's very concerning, including for people who are 50 years old and older. You got China slowing down. You got the commodity producing countries like Brazil and Russia slowing down. You've got stagnation in Europe. We've got big problems both globally and domestically. And instead of talking about what they're talking about, the campaign trail, they should be talking about tax cuts, unleashing the American energy industry, you know, fixing health care, fixing immigration, fixing our infrastructure and a pro-growth agenda. But we hear very little of that. Yeah, you and I are both pro-growth guys. And, and, and essentially what I hear, the, and, and you, we both know the talking points, 70 plus months of growth, private sector job creation is up every single month. Uh, they inherited uh, an economy that was losing 800,000 jobs per month. Now, of course, that goes back eight years, and any American economy since then would have improved more. But I get the sense that essentially what Hillary Clinton is saying, particularly now that she's teamed up with Bernie Sanders, is we've got a lot of money in this country. It's just that the greediest people in, the, in control of everything won't share it. Well, it's a classic. They want to redistribute the pie rather than growing the pie. And we could have both debates, but all you hear from the Bernie Sanders crowd and, frankly, much of the Democratic Party is, let's redistribute the growth that we have. But, it, but that is an incomplete and really misguided debate in the sense that we should talk about how do we get this economy growing back to 3 or 4 percent or more GDP. And, and you hear none of that on the campaign trail. And it's sadly missing from this campaign on both sides, frankly. You know, I agree with you. Uh, I mean, if I was Donald Trump, to be quite frank with you, that's all I talk about because I think it's a winning message. But also I think a message need, needs to be sold, particularly to young people, about capitalism again. You know, with that British exit vote, there were a lot of polls taken. And one that caught my eye, uh, only 51 percent thought capitalism was working over there. And I get a sense that a lot of people in this country don't believe our system works anymore, at least for the average individual. Charles, I saw a poll recently that presented a binary choice to people under the age of 35. You had to choose in the poll between capitalism and socialism. And believe it or not, a plurality of the respondents chose socialism. If your parents or my parents would have thought that, they would have fallen out of their chair. I mean, it, without any regard to history or context or the fact that it's a failed philosophy, we have a plurality of young people in this country embracing it. And it's incumbent upon those of us who believe in free markets, who believe in growth, who believe in capitalism, to educate and inspire beyond just sort of this knee-jerk knee reaction to socialism. The country's got problems, but socialism isn't the answer. Well, Governor, thank you very much. I appreciate your time. You're always one of our favorites. Thanks, Charles.